Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news today, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was a nice afternoon, not so much in the morning. We had a lot of clouds out there and very chilly temperatures. Then the sun came out today and it ended up being pretty darn nice as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley. And I'll tell you what, as we look ahead in our seven day forecast, it's going to even be a little bit cooler tomorrow. And then a 50 50 chance for some rain showers on Thursday before we get to a beautiful stretch of weather. Weather Friday through Monday, we will be in the upper 60s Friday, mid 70s this weekend. And we're going to start off next week in the mid to upper 70s. More weather for you coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. An East Wenatchee man charged with abducting a former girlfriend across county lines pleaded guilty yesterday to lesser charges. Greyhound Bus Lines will pay $2.2 million to settle a lawsuit over its practice of allowing U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents to board its buses in Washington and then conduct warrantless immigration sweeps. And the nascent fire high above Lake Wenatchee continues to send up the occasional plume of smoke, but fire officials say it's now 70% contained. But first, our top story tonight, a Moses Lake man serving prison time for negligently shooting his girlfriend has had his conviction overturned. 31-year-old Jose Jesus Espinoza Jr. has been in Airway Heights Correction Center since he was convicted in January of 2020. Espinoza allegedly told hospital workers that he accidentally fired a handgun and wounded the victim in the back. But he denied the charge to police and at trial and at some of the testimony, it was contradictory. The State Court of Appeals in Spokane ruled today that Espinoza's lawyer didn't effectively represent him and threw out his conviction for third degree assault with a firearm. He remains imprisoned on charges including unlawful firearm possession and witness tampering. Meanwhile, an East Wenatchee man charged with abducting a former girlfriend across county lines pleaded guilty yesterday to lesser charges. 20-year-old Trey Michael Haberlock pleaded instead to second-degree assault and misdemeanor harassment. Back in January, sheriff's deputies said Haberlock struck the woman in the face threatened her with a knife and forced her to drive him from Wenatchee to Ellensburg. Prosecutors say they'll ask for a sentence of 12 months in jail plus a year on probation when Haberlock is sentenced coming up in December. Greyhound Bus Lines will pay $2.2 million to settle a lawsuit over its practice of allowing U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents to board its buses in Washington and conduct warrantless immigration sweeps. The bus company failed to warn customers of the sweeps, which will no longer be allowed without a proper warrant. Greyhound admits no wrongdoing in the case, but the money will provide restitution to passengers who were detained, arrested, or deported by immigration agents who boarded buses at the Spokane Intermodal Center. Well, the nascent fire high above Lake Wenatchee continues to send up the occasional plume of smoke, but fire officials say it's now 70% contained and its daily growth remains minimal. The fire was started August 4th by lightning and because of access issues has been difficult for firefighters to get to. It's burned just over 1,200 acres. Fire crews are hoping to begin reopening roads in the area in the next couple of weeks and are expect and expect hopefully some rain shower activity to help them even further. Well, coming up next, fall colors are on full display in the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest and the Forest Service is expecting big crowds out for a look at the annual splendor. For the second year in a row, East Wenatchee has canceled its Wings and Wheels Festival over COVID-19 concerns. And the Washington Department of Transportation closed Highway 2 near Stevens Pass for several hours last week to winterize the popular route through the Cascades. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done. 
a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. new novel is now available at Amazon.com. The title, Lost Treasure of the China Bar, details life on the Columbia River and Plateau during the 1800s. You ask, is the treasure still buried somewhere near Shilin? Find out by reading Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Buy it on Amazon.com. $12.99 for paperback, $2.99 for Kindle. A great gift. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. Welcome back. In another news, fall colors are on full display in the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, and the Forest Service is expecting big crowds out for a look at the annual splendor. Officials are reminding visitors not to block roadways when trailheads are full and to always leave room for emergency vehicles to navigate those roadways. And a special thanks to Lindsay Keese and Caitlin White for providing those beautiful pictures. Well, for the second year in a row, East Wenatchee has canceled its Wings and Wheels Festival over COVID-19 concerns. Normally held the first weekend in October to celebrate the first nonstop Trans-Pacific flight by Clyde Pangborn and Hugh Herndon, the festival also features a car show and cruise, as well as many other community activities. City officials said they're using the two-year break in festivals to explore a revamping of the annual event to be more community-oriented and tourist-friendly. Well, it sometimes can inconvenient when a highway closes for a while, but in the case of our mountain passes, it's always for a good reason. The Washington Department of Transportation closed Highway 2 near Stevens Pass for several hours last week to winterize the popular route through the Cascades. They sent us this footage of what that job looked like. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. 
D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. I'm Wenatchee School Board member Maria Iñiguez, and I understand that your tax dollars fund public education in our district. That is why I'm holding the district accountable for every dollar spent and have supported a balanced budget because every community member should know how the district is using funds to support student achievement while maintaining long-term fiscal sustainability. Vote to retain me, Maria Iñiguez, for Wenatchee School Board position too. Are you a take charge kind of person? Consider a career as a health unit coordinator. You'll work to keep health facilities running efficiently by coordinating medical providers, patients, and departments. The Charter College Certificate in Health Unit Coordinator program can get you up to speed on basic patient care, health records management, health and safety procedures, and medical billing. And the 10 month online program includes a computer you keep. Get started at chartercollege.edu, where we work to get you to work. Hi, Stephen DeVilbas here, Branch Manager of Beneficial and Home Care. We are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate in employment or services. It is our mission to maximize our clients' physical health and sense of mental well-being while remaining in the comfort of their home. We are currently seeking professional caregivers who share our mission to help our clients live safely and comfortably at home. Call Beneficial and Home Care. Schedule your interview today, 509-663-7900. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center instructor Juan Luera has been nominated for a National Life Changer Award. Now in his sixth year of leading the law enforcement and criminal justice program at the Tech Center, Luera is eligible to win one of 18 cash awards of up to $10,000 for his school. Luetta brought extensive military and law enforcement experience to the program and many of his students, past and present, credit him with turning their lives around. In 2019, NCW Life's Caitlin Hedersheet featured Luetta in an NCW Life magazine. Here are some highlights from that report. I, I go by three names only. I go by Mr. Luetta, Tax Sergeant, or Sir. It's not, hey dude, um, in my classroom, that doesn't fly. Um, they can't use my last name only because uh, what we also instill is a, a healthy respect, a mutual respect. So when we have that in class, things, things are more orderly. Mr. Luetta says he's seen many transformations in his classroom and heard from other teachers what kind of changes they see in his cadets. He says the structure he's developed for the program lends itself to this transformation. Sometimes their students haven't shown a propensity or uh, any uh, motivation to be successful in their classes. And after about half a semester or a semester to a year, they see a change in their students because of what we stress in here with the culture and with the respect and just getting your work done. I mean, we have a structured promotion system here that requires them to get their work in. They think they don't know what to think about it at first, and so they'll be lacking assignments until promotions come up and they see what a big deal it is, and then all of a sudden they kick it into high gear and they're turning stuff in. It creates a lot of work for me, but it's it's worth the effort because it shows them that it is important, not only in the classroom, but it's important at their jobs to get work done. They can't just show up and look good. They have to perform as well. Well, from what I've learned, like even if you don't want to be a police officer, it's still a really fun class. Like you still get your credits, which is pretty good. <laughs> and then like you get, you can get all these new friends. And like normally in like normal classes at the high school, you make like, I don't know, one or two friends in your high school classes. But here we're all friends. We had a sub recently and it was like the sub wasn't even there. We were running ourselves. We're in this together. <laughs> it used to be this dweaky little, <laughs> tiny little freshman. And now I'm just I'm in this. <laughs> he's helped me like really like find parts of myself that I didn't even know. And like he's helped boost my confidence a lot because I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really have that much confidence. But you don't I'm have to be interested in going into the law enforcement field to be a good citizen. And really what we're what we're trying to accomplish more than uh, recruiting people for law enforcement are creating good citizens, good informed citizens. 
Most yeah. of his stuff, I've talked to like state patrols and stuff. I've been to a couple of interviews and it's all relevant. Like everything they've told me, he's told me and he's always, he's always there for you. Like he's told us if you ever like go to court or have an interview that he can be there for you. Like he's not just like an in-class teacher. He cares about you. He ties us all together. He's definitely been a huge role model and I hope someday I can be like him. Trip. Their parents have not seen that level of um, success or the level of achievement. And when they see their their students and their, their kids in uniform and performing, it gets a little emotional for them. And I can see that it, it's uh, it's creating that difference that they may have needed in their life. So and it, and it gives me satisfaction to, to know that I'm a small part of that. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your day was a good one. It started out as a cloudy day and then progressively became a little bit clear. And by mid-afternoon and late afternoon now, it clouding up just a little bit, but we did see some blue sky about mid-afternoon as we look down at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley for today. It did stay cool though. In fact, unseasonably cool. 64 unofficially our high today. 71 is our normal mark. 41 this morning at 555 this morning. It was chilly. 48 is our normal low temperature. 89 our record high. That was set once again second day in a row in 1963. Record low 34 in 1999. I know we thought we'd get a little bit more rain. That's kind of been our trend, hasn't it? Big chances for rain and then we don't get much. Three one hundredths is all last night. But that gets us now to 3.25 inches for the year. Sunrise this morning 656 and will set for us tonight just a little while in 645. Well, let's take a look now what we can expect for your hump day Wednesday and it's going to be another cool one. In fact, a little bit cooler than today even though I think we'll see a little more sun tomorrow. 61 in the basin for Moses Lake, Afreda and Quincy. 60 for you folks down in Ellensburg. 61 here in the Wenatchee Valley, 60 in Leavenworth. Look at Lake Wenatchee, a cool one tomorrow at 53. And Lake Chelan, a beautiful day. I guess if you like cooler weather with a high of 61 degrees. Tonight we can expect partly cloudy skies. Uh, it will be a chilly one once again overnight tonight. Not as cold, I don't think, as this morning, but still in the mid-40s. Clouds beginning to roll in because of this large area of low pressure off the British Columbia coast. And that will increase our cloudiness throughout the day day tomorrow and that's going to keep our temperatures down a little bit around 60 degrees as rain begins to creep in. So keep that in mind as we get you into Thursday. We have about a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain on Thursday. The question is will this band of rain jump over the Cascades and finally bring us some rain? We'll have to wait and see about that. High temperatures in the upper 60s as we get you to Friday. Football Friday. It's going to be perfect. Sunny skies, mild conditions and dry. High temperatures for Friday. There's that ridge in the upper 60s. And that, folks, is going to make for just a fantastic weekend coming up. Saturday, we can expect sunny skies, warmer temperatures. Highs back to about normal on Saturday, somewhere in the lower 70s, probably about 72 or so. For Sunday, even a little bit warmer. We're going to call that unseasonably warm for Sunday with highs in the mid-70s. Some locations, maybe even upper 70s. For Monday, more of the same. And as we start our work week with sunshine, unseasonably warm temperatures, highs once again all over central and eastern Washington in the mid to upper 70s. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast. Tonight, not quite as cold as we've seen or we saw uh, this morning, 44 overnight. A cool one tomorrow at 61. A little bit of rain, but will we see anything? We'll have to wait and see. At least a 50 to 60 percent chance. And then a nice stretch of weather. Friday right through Monday. Friday, 69 degrees. And for the weekend, does it get any better than that as we head into October? 72 Saturday, 76 your high on Sunday. And as we kick off our next work week, sunny skies on Monday with a high temperature then of 77 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next. Tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this.
Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. At Wenatchee Power Sports, we proudly offer the Polaris product line. Polaris builds the highest quality side-by-side -side in the industry with off-road capability that's second to none. The Polaris pre-order program allows customers to purchase the vehicle they want without having to select from limited dealer inventory. The Wenatchee Valley has year-round access to some of the best ORV trails in the Northwest. Start your adventure here at Wenatchee Power Sports. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do. But to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper, I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you wanna do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Lights. a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. The Mariners trailed 3-0 before facing a single pitch against the A's at T-Mobile Park last night. But Mitch Haniger, Ty France, and the rest of the offense would flex its muscles before the night was through. Seattle won 13-4. Seth Brown's three-run home run at the top of the first was a rude greeting for Seattle starter Chris Flexen. But Ty France hit the first of his four hits on the night in the third to score one run. And Luis Torrens tied it later in the third on a two-run single. That tied it up at 3-3. Mariners found themselves trailing again in the fourth before J.P. Crawford and Ty France drove in runs apiece. Mitch Hanniger followed with a big three-run home run. 3-1 to Hanniger. Barrel crush. This is on its way. Three run home run. Mitch Hanniger blew the doors off the A's in the fourth inning. A three run home run here in the bottom of the fourth. His 36th home run of the year. And it's now the Mariners eight and the Athletics four. Now, you saw where that home run came down. Now, Hanniger would come up again uh, to bat in the sixth and two runners aboard again. Well, 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 Mitch Hanniger batting with two men aboard once again. Hanniger, he's got another! It's his second three-run home run! He has just kicked the teeth in on the A's! His first time up, he had a fastball out of the ballpark. This time it's a breaking ball. Exit below again at 105, 421 feet. It's driven in six. And that's 37 home runs on the year. Aaron Goldsmith and Mike Blowers on the call on Root Sports. Uh, Ty France, by the way, would add another two run single in the seventh. Mariners would go on for the 13 4 win. Seattle's game with Oakland was the only with an impact on the American League wildcard race on Monday. Seattle's win moved the M's within a game and a half of idle Boston for the second wildcard spot. Red Sox are in Baltimore while the Blue Jays host the Yankees today. Seattle and Oakland play game two of the three game set tonight at 7 10. How about those Mariners? Seahawks coach Pete Carroll met with reporters Monday after watching the film of Sunday's 30-17 loss at Minnesota. He says the tale of the tape was all about third down in the second half. Offensively in the second half, um, you know, we had two shots on the first two drives that we didn't convert and it made a big difference. We had, we had you know, we, I think we had a sack situation that, that took place in there that made it a real long situation. But those are crucial because the other team was able to convert and they held the football and did a nice job keeping it away. You know, I, I, if 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 I had 
you know, you'd ask me before and say, hey, you give up nine points in the second half. How do you feel about that? Well, I would have felt pretty good about it, but not, not the way it happened because our offense wasn't able to, uh, to get on the field. You know, the three long drives, I mentioned, I think it was a five, a seven, and an eight something. You know, those were, those were long possessions, and uh, we're sitting there waiting. You know, and, and I think the offense had the ball twice and got the ball back with four minutes, 4.30 in the game, you know, and so uh, in the second half. So um, that's, that's third down conversions on both sides of the ball. And so we got to work together much better than that. And, and uh, you know, that's, it's, it just tells the story, unfortunately. Now, Seattle's defense is towards the bottom of the league once again. Carroll was asked if the slow start on defense is similar from this year to last year, a team last year that took midseason to get it together. We're giving up too much, uh, you know, and, and it feels like we're in similar situations. We've been ahead. You know, we were ahead in games a lot last year uh, early on, and uh, we jumped out on this one too, you know, and, and that that's similar. And, Responding to those situations and holding the score down has not been a strength of ours early in the year, and so um, now I don't I don't know how to explain that to you in relative you know from one year to the next, but it seems similar, and I can see why you would observe that. Seattle will try to right the ship Sunday when they play their first divisional game in Santa Clara against the 49ers. Kickoff set for 105. You can watch the action on Fox. We'll be out once again uh, for some prep sports broadcasts tonight at Lee Boftel Field of the Apple Bowl. That's right, Wenatchee Panthers hosting the Davis Pirates and Girls Big Nine Soccer, 7 o'clock start time. Sebastian Morongo and Matt Wisen have your pregame starting at 6.45 here on the NCW Live Channel. Let's take a look at the rest of the soccer schedule for today. Chelan hosting Quincy, Tadaskit traveling to Brewster, Liberty Bell hosting Pateras, and Okanagan playing at Lake Roosevelt. Bridgeport's visiting Manson, Cashmere clashing with Cascade in Leavenworth. Uh, coming up 7 o'clock tonight, uh, besides the Wenatchee Davis game, Wenatchee, or Eastmont plays at Eisenhower, and Moses Lake is at Sunnyside. And I can't believe how many volleyball matches there are on the schedule for tonight. Holy cow. In fact, 24 high schools involved in 12 volleyball matches. The 630 games have Cascade hosting Cashmere, Omax at Tenasket, Oroville hosts Brewster, Manson travels to Lake Roosevelt, and Liberty Bell plays at Okanagan. At 7, Eastmont welcomes Eisenhower, Wenatchee plays at Davis, Moses Lake hosts Sunnyside, Quincy's at Chelan, Bridgeport takes on Cascade Christian, and Eniat is at Moses Lake Christian. <gasps> Afraid of plays at Ellensburg tonight at 7.15. So, good luck to everybody. And, of course, there can only be one winner. Uh, that means there has to be a loser because, you know, we keep track. That's why Les Schwab sponsors the scoreboard because, you know, there's got to be a score. Got to be a winner. Got to be, well, there you go. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grant Stroh. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Greg. Tomorrow is Wednesday. That means winning Wednesday. If for grabs once again, just like it was last week, a couple of tickets to the VIP spot at the Gateway Cinema. Next time you want to go to the movies out there in Old Station at the Gateway Cinema, to the VIP spot. That's the 21 and over. They'll bring you your food and your cocktail right to your chair kind of theater experience. You're going to have a chance to win a pair of tickets tomorrow on Winning Wednesday. Plus highlights of tonight's Wenatchee Davis soccer game and everything else you need to start your Wednesday. We'll be here. We expect to see you here as well tomorrow morning live for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Graham, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.